Good morning, guys. Today we are going to make polpettone con ricotta. And what that is, is Italian meatloaf. And um, this one has cheese in it, and it's really, really yummy. So we're going to make the polpettone first, and then we're going to make a, a fresh tomato sauce, a light fresh tomato sauce to go over the top of it. To be Not to cook with the sauce on, but you're going to serve it with the sauce. All right, so what you're going to need is about two pounds of chopped meat uh, in a nice big bowl. You're going to need parsley, you're going to need salt, you're going to need pepper, you're going to need nutmeg, you are going to need cubed mozzarella, you're going to need scallions, chopped scallions, you're going to need two eggs, you're going to need grated Parmigiano Romano cheese. You're going to need ricotta. You're going to need breadcrumbs. I'm using day old bread that I'm going to soak in milk and squeeze out before I add to the meat. And you're going to need olive oil. All right, so let's get rolling. First thing we're going to do is soak our breadcrumbs in milk. I might need a little bit more. It's snowing, it's snowing, snowing, snowing. It is snowing a lot. And uh, looks like it snowed most of the night because it's well covered out there and it's still coming down. So it is the perfect day for a beautiful meatloaf. All right, what you want to do is get your bread nice and wet. This is at least day old bread, okay? Because you don't want it to be uh, too soft. Because once you get it wet here, you're going to break it up into your meatloaf. <clears throat> Make sure it's nice and soaked. Preheat your oven at 375. big bowl. I hope you can see inside this bowl. I'll move it around as we need to. Scallions smell so good. Alright, take your breadcrumbs and squeeze them. Squeeze the milk out really good. And then break them into your meat. See that? It makes beautiful, fresh breadcrumbs rather than the can the whatever the canned kind the container kind um And this is about two, this is a little over two pounds of chopped meat, but um, you could eyeball it. You know, depending on how much uh, chopped meat you have, um, you can adjust your breadcrumbs or other ingredients accordingly. All right. To the bread and meat mixture. Can you see it? I'm not sure. Let me take this board away. It's a little bit better. All right. To the bread and meat mixture, you're going to add your eggs. That's two beaten eggs for this quantity of meat. You're going to 
going to grate some beautiful nutmeg into this. I'm going to salt it. Add your fresh ground pepper. You want to add a handful of parsley. Now, I would normally use fresh parsley, of course, but problem is uh, Aldi does not have any fresh herbs except for cilantro. Go figure. All right, throw your scallions in. And with clean hands, get in there and turn this. Mix it. Mix it up just a little bit. You don't want to over mix this because you're going to mix it twice more. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to add grated cheese, Parmesan Reggiano. Or pecorino romano or grana padano whatever grated cheese you have use whatever you like mix it up just a little bit more and we're going to add autocotta Regatta is what keeps this meatloaf moist. Beautiful regatta. Look at that. I have, what, what do I have here? It looks like uh, this is a five ounce container. And I'm going to use about, I'm going to say about two thirds of it, perhaps. That's what it looks like to me, about two-thirds. The rest you can dollop over the top of the meatloaf when you serve it. So there's no waste. All right, mix again a little bit. It looks beautiful already, right? Look at that. Now this is when you want to mix it pretty good. Make sure everything is incorporated. As this meatloaf cooks um, for quite a while. It cooks for 45 minutes at uh, 375 covered. Then you will uncover it and cook it for another hour and a half. That is pretty well mixed. So now we're going to add in our cubed mozzarella. This way, when you cut into it, you got these little melted bits of mozzarella in, uh, among your meat. And oh gosh, just amazing. I mean, you can just imagine how good it is, right? just by the ingredients. And it's really, it's not hard. There's a lot of stuff in it. There's a lot of cheese in it. But it's not a difficult thing to make. So make sure you get your mozzarella well in there, well incorporated. So I don't know when the uh, uh, snow is gonna stop. We're supposed to get more tomorrow night into Monday, which is a drag, because we really don't 
We hate snow on work mornings. It's such a drag. It's bad enough Monday mornings without snow, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, get your moths in there really well. Looks really, really yummy already. Okay, I think we're pretty well mixed. A couple more, couple more turns, and we'll put it out into our... You can shove the little mozzarella's down in there. Okay. Looks really, really good. Get your pan. Coat it with a little bit of olive oil and brush that olive oil around. Brush it all around the pan. I'm using that new um, Crusader pan that I bought last week. I'm really excited to try this. I think it'll be a perfect pan for this, um, as well as lasagna. Very beautiful. All right, so we coated our pan with some olive oil. We're gonna turn out our loaf. And we're gonna shape it. Your mozzarella down in there so that it melts inside. Very beautiful. You want it to be pretty even, pretty even loaf. Now, see how quick and easy that was. And you know what, with um, most Italian cooking, with almost all Italian cooking, it's like a must to use really fresh ingredients, you know what I mean? Look how beautiful that is with the scallions peeking out and just beautiful. All right, I think we're good with our loaf. Wish we had some more time. A messy process. Then what we're going to do is drizzle a bit of olive oil on top. Just a little bit. And we're going to brush it across the top. Mm -hmm. Looks good, right? Okay, all brushed and ready for the oven. What you want to do is cover this with foil for the first 45 minutes, okay? Foil and put it in the oven, 375, for 45 minutes. Then we'll uncover it, cook it for another hour and a half, and it'll be ready. So I'll be back in a minute to show you how to make the sauce. First I'm going to do the dishes. I'll be back with you shortly. Hi guys, we're getting ready to make our sauce. And what you're going to need for your sauce is some uh, three cloves of chopped garlic. You want a, an onion chopped up. You want chopped celery, a couple of stalks, one and a half stalks maybe. You want some grated carrot. You want salt. You want hot pepper flakes. 
do want bay leaves, basil, and black pepper. Now, uh, basil, I, I would prefer having fresh basil, but again, they only had cilantro and Aldi. The other thing they didn't have was um, uh, canned whole, I mean, yeah, canned plum tomatoes or San Marzano's, which I really wanted. So I had to get plum tomatoes and clean and chop them myself. Uh, that's the thing about Aldi. You know, they have most of what you need, but not everything all the time. And uh, so rather than run around and go to another store, I just got the plum tomatoes and I washed and chopped them myself. So this is this will be fun. So I'll take you to the stove and we will start our sauce. All right, guys. We are going to make our sauce. Um, this is a French oven. A Frenchy, not a Dutchy. A Dutchy is round. A Frenchy is oval. So in our Frenchy, there's also cast iron, enameled ca uh, cast iron. So you can only use, um, you should always use a wooden spoon in your uh, enameled pans because you will scratch it otherwise. Into the Frenchy, we put olive oil. We coated the bottom with olive oil. And in here, I put the onions and the celery because the celery uh, and the onions take a little bit longer to cook down and soften. So we'll get those going. Maybe turn my heat up a tiny bit. We'll lower it later when we, when we simmer the sauce. Well, I'm gonna throw my carrots in. some of the seasoning here. Okay, we're going to salt. We can salt again when we, after we add the tomatoes. We're going to put in our hot pepper. Put a couple bay leaves in there. Basil. Again, I wish I had fresh basil. If it was the summertime, I would have plenty in the garden. Got pepper. And I'm putting my garlic in um, in the beginning because uh, I don't want it to burn because that will impart a horrible taste to the entire sauce. So we'll let this go a little bit before we add our garlic. Kind of just a tad. Mmm, smelling really good. Those get soft. Starting to smell really, really good. Okay, we're going to put our garlic in. I'm going to add a little bit of water to let these vegetables steam a little. A little bit of water. I'm going to let those steam. There's about a cup of water. And I'm going to let those steam down a little bit. After they steam for a little while, I will add the tomatoes and uh, I'll come back and, and show you. 
the tomatoes. The veggies look nice and soft and steamed. Nicely soft. Okay, so we're going to add our tomatoes. A little more salt. All right, now what we're going to do is cover this and simmer it until we like the consistency. So Maybe we'll look at it in about a half an hour, and uh, if we need to go more, we will. And that's all there is to the sauce. <laughs> Back with you in a minute. Okay, guys. Um, I've been simmering here for about 20 minutes. It's looking really, really, really good. But uh, I'm going to let this go at least another half hour so I'm saying maybe an hour total would be good on this you could actually simmer it as you know as long as you want but more you want the tomatoes to break down the longer you simmer it and uh, taste it see if you like the consistency if not you can simmer it longer uh, you can leave it chunky like this which is nice also but that is looking really good All right, guys, um, now is the taste test time, and you decide what you want to add to it. It's looking really good. It's breaking down really nice. But you want your celery to get soft, so I want to see how soft my celery is right now. Still a little bit crunchy. And I think... I put a little more hot pepper in it while I was cooking it, and now I'm going to put a little more salt. And I'm going to add a little bit of Chianti. Add a little Chianti. Not much. Doesn't that look beautiful? Yummy! So my neighbor just shoveled my driveway and my walk, so as soon as I finish cooking, I can pack it up, bring it to my father, so get out and see how the roads are. Of course I have a Jeep, so it's not an issue for me. That's tasting good. I think sauce is all about taste, you know, your taste. I'm going to add a little more uh, basil, okay? And the last thing I'm going to add is a tiny bit of sugar. Just to cut a little bit of the acidity. Just that much. I'm going to mix it really good. I'm going to cover it and simmer it for uh, at least another half hour or so. Mmm. smells really good. You can add anything that you like to your sauce. You could leave out anything you don't like. You don't have to put celery and carrots. You could just do the onions and garlic. Mmm. Okay. Sugar makes a difference. Very good. Alright. Let's get this going here. Let it simmer. Let it sit and simmer. 
and I'll be back with you in a little while. Okay guys, there is your polpetone con ricotta out of the oven. It looks and smells amazing. What I'm going to do is let it sit a little bit before I cut it. I'm going to cut a hunk off uh, and bring it to my parents house and uh, probably uh, freeze some for Skeety and uh, we'll give it a taste in a little bit. It's very, very hot. Remember, 45 minutes covered and an hour and a half uncovered. So, really, really smells good and the sauce is looking amazing. So, we'll put it all together in a few minutes.